All right. Today we're going to talk about preserving. And these are all the ones I've done. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. These here I do whole. Just a little salt. And there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the difference. Twints tw the two. Twints the two. I'm going to show you real quick. All right. You can do a real cheap, easy way like this. Or you can do the old school Italian way, like so. That's cheap, easy. That's cheap, easy. And there's really not too much cheap, easy, old Italian. And there's not too much difference. Hi, Willie. He don't like tomatoes. So you cut off all the, the rot. You make a little cross down there and you cut out your stem. You throw them in some simmering water here. Just for a few, few seconds. Oh, crap. And then we're going to put it on the oven, 250, once we get these canned. I'm going to can a couple the old school Italian way because I like it and we're going to can a couple the cheap easy way because sometimes I get lazy. Uh oh, that's about it for that. And you don't need a lot to do this. Um, some canning jars obviously, a pair of tongs. Oops. You keep the tongs out of the water traditionally. And then this thing. Will pick this thing up anywhere if you want to. But when you blanch with your little cross in the bottom, as you look, let's see. And the skin, skin just starts peeling like that. As long as they're underwater, you can peel them easily. All right. All right. So then we had them in the we had them in the simmering water until the skin started to split and cold cold water. I just all I do is I take them in the kitchen sprayer and just give them a good Okay? Now the dog thinks I'm calling him. And look how easy they are to blanch. Look. You can almost do that one-handed. In fact, I think I'll try, just to prove a point. Yeah, maybe not, maybe not one-handed. Yeah, maybe. All right, look at that. One-handed. All right. So, tell me that ain't easy. And tell me that ain't beautiful. All I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these up, up in here. Okay. And like I said, we're going to make some... We're going to make some the cheaty way. We're going to make some some good way. And I'll see you in a second. All right. So a lot of you are saying, ah, what's a Mick doing making, making tomato gravy? Notice I don't call it sauce. You put in... Eh, I'm going to do about five. Five, maybe... Yeah, about five, five cannon jars. So put in that much olive oil. And then I'm not going through the trouble with the garlic and cutting up the garlic and sauteing the garlic. But I will put the garlic in here. It's about eh, one tablespoon per can. And then I cheat. Uh, uh, I cheat. Italian seasoning. About one teaspoon per can. So it'll be... You know, five and five, boom, in there, saute it real quick. Then I'm going to cut these up, cube them up, throw them up in there. A lot of people, you know, they want you to put it through the strainer there and get rid of the seeds. Don't listen to those people. They don't know what they're talking about. That's where the flavor is. Okay. And got to have your bot. You see that? That, that two shots? It's been in this bottle for, I don't know, 
over four years. Wow, this is an old bottle because my mother gave this to me. But since I've had this bottle for about maybe four years, a friend of mine, we were talking about the old Italians and bocce ball and these because people used to make lamps out of them. <laughs> And, you know, it's got a lot of good good times. And this is some rough stuff, man. The old man, you, they, they used to drink this all day. They'd go through two, three bottles of this and play bocce. And you do one shot of this and, yeah, I mean, damn. This is this is crazy. 43% bo Oh, it's crazy stuff. Get a chance to try it. Try it. Don't buy the whole bottle. It'll last you forever. <laughs> and then... The cheaty way. We got this all set up. I'm going to show you the quick and easy cheaty way. And with the quick and easy cheaty way, what you do is you grab your uh, the can of, can of jar. And you don't add oil. You just add your garlic. And you add your Italian seasoning. Okay? Tablespoon, teaspoon. And you put it right there in the bottom. Then once you get them, get them out through here, I've tried, you know, putting it in there and squishing it around, and it never mixes right. You put them in the bottom. Sometimes I like to put a little salt in there. And you pour the stuff on the top, and then you flip the can over. Okay? And it's going to look like this. It's going to look like that. And all your ingredients. See it? See? Oh, that's all that Italian seasoning and the garlic and whatnot. And that's the cheaty way. And that's not a bad sauce. That might look a little watery to you, but it ain't. You throw that on the stove and warm that up. you got something going there. Maybe a little tomato paste. If you like a thick sauce. I don't like a thick sauce. So, we're going to get all this juicing. I'm going to get the tomatoes in here. And I'm going to get them to a simmer. I'm going to show you how to, how to use the ladle. Okay, to cheat away. So anyways, I got my everything in there. My salt, my Italian spices, and my garlic. And I like to give her a little shake there. I don't know, it doesn't do anything probably, but I always keep it. A lot of things you probably all don't know about me, so I'm also a, a licensed chef. And um, yeah, please stop goofing. All right, and no, this isn't dirt. That's like glue, because I'm a mechanic, and you gotta get glue and grease and stuff all over the place. Okay, so this is a cheat away. You ready? I used to try to play songs. I got this pulse button. So. That's the cheat away. You don't add water to the tomato gravy. You never do because tomatoes have so much water in them. If anything, you do it the old fashioned way. You're boiling water out and making a thicker gravy. But, you know, um, adding a little uh, can of tomato paste to anything is not going to hurt it. Oh, baby. Well, like I said, 250. And we got to pay ode to the Galliano. Oh, that's rough stuff. You all, you don't, all don't want to drink that ever. Oh, crap. We didn't make enough. All right, so anyways, fill it up to about, about there on the shoulder. And then whatever else, when I go to fill this, I'll throw a couple more tomatoes in there. And then whatever else doesn't get used in that can, I'll throw in here. I already got my, my garlic. I um, sauteed that. And my Italian seasonings, and that's my salt on the top. You just want to, oh yeah, you want to break it up. You can use a potato masher. I've done that to some success. 
there's a tool for this. It's a big cone looking who's it. But I'm not about buying fancy tools. Oh man, I'm hungry. Oh, I all wanted to show you something. When you go to Blanche Tomatoes, right? And this is probably going to get me banned from YouTube. But I, I forgot to show you. When you go to cut your X, cut an X down here. Okay? It's for them to blanch. I'm saving this one for hamburgers. But when you cut your X, I don't know the proper name for this. I know it's from, you know, the pastel on the on the flower, but I call it the tit. Wherever your X lands, if, let's say it comes across like it, take the knife and just, while it's cold and before you blanch it, it'll make it easier to peel because this little bit likes to stick to the meat of the tomato. All right? Yeah, so you can say what you want, but this old Mick knows a thing or two about making tomato gravy. It looks good and smells good already. All right. So I've been boiling this. Oh, crap. It's about 8.30-ish. Medium-high heat. And pulling out all the foam, which is just air. And then once you get her to boil in, if you look up in here, that's all the pith, the seed pith. So this is all foam, which is air, and seed pith. And actually, that don't look too bad. I might eat that. Look at that. Mmm, num, num, num. But anyways, so I should probably bring that temperature down. So I got, this, got her up to boiling. I got the oven at 250. I'm throwing them cans. Okay for about 75 minutes and I'm not doing something right because I Italian grandma found a picture of I Italian grandma she's looking at me like boy what the fuck are you doing oh whoa 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 demonetized she's saying boy there's something wrong with you what's what's this YouTube stuff all about but anyways most important thing when it comes to canning is after you pour everything in get a oh, Damp paper towel, wipe the top down before you put your band, uh, before you put your cap and your band on. Because A, it does two things. It helps seals it so the badness, all the bad microbes and whatnot can't get in there. And B, <laughs> later on when you try to pull her open, you can actually get her open without, you know, using three men and a boy. So... That being said, I also wiped down my bands real quick. And, uh, yeah, just keep everything clean and, and you're good to go.